right, so we're getting near the release of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, very exciting. We haven't had a Mario movie in a long time, and the last one was uh, not, not the best. So <laughs> this one looks really great from the trailer so far. So really excited about it. And right now we're getting the launch of a lot of Mario products from the movie. And Jack Pacific has been a great steward of the Mario line for a while. They're producing a lot in the four inch line and the two and a half inch line as well in terms of Mario in the world of Nintendo. Of course, they're also making Pokemon figures and they're making Zelda figures and uh, Metroid figures. It's been a while since those have been out, but they're out there in the ether if you ever wanna to try to score one. But we're gonna focus on the Mario line today, specifically the new four inch Mario characters based on the movie. Uh, these come in at a higher price point. The original or the current line is only $9.95 or there and abouts uh, for one of the four inch figures. These are coming in at $20 a piece. Uh, and we're gonna show you why they're a little bit more expensive and um, why they might may or may not merit that price point. Uh, but we're gonna take a look at them each individually since we got these five here and compare them to similar uh, products in the four inch line. And of course, as always, we have to start with Mario. He's sort of the epitomous character. He's where everything began. So I always like to start by taking a look at the box. So we'll check out this guy. Uh, immediately, you could tell the box is giving off uh, big Black Series energy vibes. It has a very uh, drastic change from how the original figure looked uh, in terms of the style in terms of uh, what's featured on the box he, there's a little call out of him and in the back it goes over his articulation and um, just uh, showing you off the accessories but originally these were all pads and they were not uh, essentially uh, you know boxes so there's a lot more packaging going on here and that might be where part of the price point factors into it um, I don't know if it's wholly necessary but why don't we crack this guy open and do a little compare and contrast with the classic four inch Mario. Okay, so I wanted to start by showing you the difference in the packaging here. Here's the four inch Mario from the Jack's Pacific World of Nintendo line. Uh, one thing I can notice right off the bat, 11 points of articulation, 16 points of articulation. So that's one improvement they made over the figures. Um, and here they have a bio, they have no bio on this box. It, considering that this is more of a premium feel, it would have been better to have that bio on the back too. So they're sort of missing out on giving him sort of, sort of a more of encompassing feel with a backstory on it and whatnot with packaging. So premium packaging usually has those kinds of things to it and it's missing that element. Uh, this one also had a little bit of call out to show you different um, action uh, things you could do with their articulation. This one does not. So a little bit difference in the packaging there. Uh, here's our character. I pulled him out because didn't want to make a lot of noise and feedback in the mic and whatnot. Uh, you could tell he's, he's kind of drastically different than the uh, original Mario. Uh, the original Mario here, there were different versions. There's open hand Mario, closed hand Mario, uh, smiling Mario, straight face Mario, and he had different accessories. Uh, this one came with the POW block, so I'll put that here. Whereas the movie Mario, he came with a plunger. And a lot of the marketing on the movie is really playing up the angle that these are the Mario Brothers plumbing company. So. That's kind of cool that they, they kept that consistent with the figure as well. Uh, you can see a height difference here. Uh, I want to say he's about an inch to maybe two inches taller. So instead of a four inch figure, you're getting more of a six inch figure. So uh, again, giving off those big Black Series energy vibes uh, in terms of the design here. Uh, I like the gloves. They're a lot better. These gloves have a lot more detailing on them than the, the other Mario gloves, and I'll give you a side-by-side -side shot here. And they kind of look more like gloves. Uh, his hands look a little bit more refined than they do in the original version. Um, this is a closed hand version, but even the open hand version isn't too different. And it's a completely different shade of white as well. Um, these wrists do not rotate. They were sort of one piece here, whereas these hands do rotate independently of the arm. So there's your additional point of articulation uh, you can see the hair actually has lines in it. This hair was all flat, one, one piece, one tone. Uh, the mustache is actually kind of a separate piece that's attached there. This mustache seems like it's part of the mold of the face. Uh, the eyes have this nice glossy look to them. And uh, I'll give you a close up here so you can really check that out. He's got a nice glossy look on the eyes. Um, and you can see 
that face is just a little bit more defined than the original Mario, particularly with the nose. So all in all, he's coming in a lot closer to his on-screen animation look, and it really uh, shows here in the figure as well. So it's a pretty good uh, approximation of how he's looking in the movie. So they did a really nice job with that. But uh, continuing on in your differences, you can see the hat here has like embroidery on it. There's This is all flat, one piece here. Even though the Mario patch on the front is sewn on, this is all, again, just flat. Um, the rim is more defined. Uh, the ears are more defined. Uh, the outfit is more defined. You can see stitching on this. This just has some lines on it. And the shoes are independent. They're their own pieces, whereas these are molded on. So you don't get additional articulation there. Uh, I mean, everything, even the overall front, it's got an extra pocket on there, gold buttons. So, I mean, in essence, the paint applications are way better. Uh, the figure is taller. He's got way more articulation. Those extra five points really do make a difference here. Um, and the facial features are just amazing. I mean, he's coming off as a much, much better looking Mario than this Mario here. Um, and this is designed to look more like the movie Mario. So it makes sense. So at the higher price point, you're getting a figure that is two inches taller, more articulation, uh, better deco on the character, better engineering on the character. I, I, mean, I would argue that it is worth it. I mean, this really is a sort of ultimate representation of Mario looking a lot better than the standard Marios do. Um, I don't think the packaging was necessary. I think he could have put them on a card back. Um, I think they're, what they're trying to do here is give you a little bit more value for that $20, so you're getting a little bit more of a premium packaging to it. I mean, they even have that name call out on the side. Um, would have been nice if they included the bio blurb on the back, but uh, everything else I think does put this figure in the $20 range. So definitely worth it if you're a Mario fan um, and definitely does take over uh, in terms of its, its look with its uh, predecessor, as you can see here. So, all right. Well, that was our look at Mario. Why don't we move on to his brother Luigi next? Again, the first thing I want to do with Luigi is show you the difference in the, the packaging here. This is from some of the earlier generations of the World of Nintendo line. The packaging you can see is a little bit different, more basic on the front, uh, but very similar on the back in terms of um, the character layout. Still 11 points of articulation. No buy on these, these older cards. Um, they're just very basic at the time. Uh, this Luigi included just a question block. Uh, nothing really exciting there. Um, so. It was a, a variety of different accessories. You could get one-up mushrooms or um, power mushrooms, but it was very, very basic. There wasn't a whole lot um, exciting to them at the time. So uh, essentially very similar in terms of the differences with the original line uh, that I showed you with Mario. Same thing with the hands, uh, much better tone, and they had that articulation in the hands. Uh, the, the uniforms, you can see there's stitching and no stitching. Uh, the face is completely different with that independent mustache, uh, the change in the nose, the glossy eyes, the lines in the hair, the embroidery on the hat. So, I mean, he has all the same differences between the four inch line and this new six inch line here with these characters. And of course, Luigi is taller than his brother Mario, so they kept that consistent here. So you can see he's just a little bit taller back to back, uh, equivalent of maybe a half inch or something like that here. Um, but they kept that right as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll show you back to back here so you could really see the differences in the two characters, but it's a similar standout that we saw with Mario, that he is much, much better, has a better engineering, a lot better tooling, a lot better deco, a lot better uh, paint applications, more articulation. Everything about him is basically um, uh, shown off here in this new version of him as well. So uh, much, much better figure <laughs> altogether. Uh, he looks great. Um, I'll show you a close up here of Luigi with his accessory in a minute. So I guess this kind of harks a lot. I'm getting a lot of feelings of Luigi's mansion when I see a flashlight with him. And the, the only couple of scenes we saw him so far, we saw him running from the, um, the dry bones, again, giving that very haunted mansion kind of feel to it. So that's kind of cool. So this fits in the hand here and it's a little tricky because you got to get that thumb out of the way but i'm sure once you get it in his hand it, it's gonna it's gonna remain and not move around yep so there we go he's got a good grip on that flashlight so that's his only accessory here mario came with the plunger of course uh but i'll give you a close-up here so you can see all that great detailing i was talking about 
He has that, uh, the face is completely retooled. He's got those nice glossy eyes that make him pop like an animated character. All that stitching you can see on the front. Um, the stitching on the hat. And then again, all the, the stitching on his pants in the back. The independent shoes, uh, all the way down to the laces. They have really nice detail um, on this character. They did a really great job. Um, so again, he's great. <laughs> he pairs with the brother. You kind of need to get the two. And they also both have treads on the bottom of their shoes, so that's a nice touch as well. So another figure in the line, very premium feel to it um, with this, this new Mario movie line. So again, I think it's worth it. The difference between the two, you're getting a taller figure, um, better defined figure, more articulation in this figure, and he just looks great overall. So let's go over to the traveling companion, Toad, now. Toad probably has the most drastic changes in the line, as you can see here really quick, uh, and that's because he's, he's designed from his movie uh, character appearance. Uh, why don't I give you a close-up here so you could really check out all that great detail on Toad. And you see here, uh, first of all, he has this frying pan accessory, which I love. Um, that's really fun. <laughs> we'll see that in the movie. He has this backpack, and this is molded onto him, the straps, uh, so you don't have to worry about this popping off. Um, but a lot of great detail in the face there, I think really brings him to life, even though Toad's a very kind of simple look with that mushroom on his head. Um, his shoes, great detail on there. And then that backpack. I mean, you get a lot of these different equipment and gear there. He's got rope, he's got a, a pickaxe, a sleeping bag, a little lantern and a, a cup. And then he's got this little pocket on the back there where it looks like you could, you could put the pan in essentially if you wanted to. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the pan you could take out here and you could just put it in the, uh, the pocket here and there's even a hole in the bottom for the, uh, the pan to stick out. So you have this look that he is just equipped up there with the pan. Uh, so that's really cool that they added that fun little feature to give him something else to, to carry, uh, essentially. So we'll check that out in the movie and see, um, how he looks there. But, uh, let's see how he balances given this, this huge load here in his back. Um, I think you have to kind of tilt them forward a lot. Um, there you go, to get him to keep that pack without falling backward. So like I showed you with the other ones, uh, Toad, when they did Red Toad, um, it was the earlier generation. They've done Yellow Toad, Green Toad, Blue Toad. Um, so he just came with a coin, very, very basic. Um, not much going on there. And you can see Toad's design here was very simple. Uh, didn't have any articulation in the legs or the body. His, his arms moved. Um, I think this one, he says the three points, uh, yeah, three points of articulation on it. So his arms moved and his head turned and then that was really it. Um, the feet didn't move, the body didn't move. So a lot less articulation compared to this toad who has nine points of articulation. So you're getting three times the articulation with this figure. Uh, you're getting a much bigger character as you can see compared to this version here. Bigger mushroom head on it, more well-defined giant, these giant circles on it. Looks more like a, one of the mushrooms there. And uh, I, I think he's just got more expression in the face. The eyes are, th uh, you know, more depth to him. And um, he's got a little bit more on the clothing here. He's got this waistband that he didn't have originally. The shoes have some texture to them. Uh, the pants have some texture to them. Uh, just a lot more going on here. So now he could bend at the elbows and at the arms and the feet move and the waist moves and the head moves. So a lot more articulation than the original Toad. So uh, you know, a hundred times better. Uh, this is way, way better Toad. A lot more uh, deco went into him, a lot more engineering. Uh, so definitely worth the price point on Toad here. Um, he's ultimate Toad compared to this Toad. So um, a lot better. Plus he's got that movie look, which I just, I love it for Toad. He just gives Toad more to him other than being that annoying person that tells you the princess is in another castle or occasionally having a star to hand off to you. I mean, this Toad looks more functional. He's ready to participate. So we'll see Toad's role in the movie. I'm really looking forward to it, but he looks a lot better than this Toad. Uh, so again, another massive improvement uh, with the tooling on this one. Much better, definitely worth it. Uh, let's check out the latest character to be introduced in the, she came in the second trailer, and that will be Princess Peach. All right, so we have our, our Princess Peach here. Uh, give you a nice close-up so you can check out some of the features on this one. Uh, again, you can see the face has that, that depth, those glossy eyes. Uh, there's a lot of um, texture in the hair, on the crown, on her jewel, on her gown. Um, 
you know, bright colors going all the way around her. Uh, gloves very well defined as well. You can see a little texturing on the gloves. Uh, so they did a really nice job with peach. Um, we haven't had many peaches in the, the four inch line. Uh, essentially you got uh, classic peach and then I believe cat peach and that was it. Uh, so <laughs> this is the first uh, new peach character in a while. You can see again that drastic height difference between the two. Um, and it just everything is just tooled way better. So looking at the crown here, uh, a lot more coloring, a lot more texture. You can actually see her hair through the top of it here on this one. And uh, this one is actually filled in, so you can't. So this looks more like a, a princess um, crown or tiara or whatnot. Uh, so again, the, the, herring, the hair here, very basic. This one has a lot of texture on it. The face, much more improved in depth to it. Um, this one, uh, it has earrings on it, but they're kind of, um, you know, giant. I think these are more proportionate. Uh, the features are much better, particularly the eyes. And then you can see like the, the jewel crest on her, uh, chest here is better. And then there's more layering going on on the outfit on this version. Um, and even the umbrella, I mean, you can see very similar, but much better texture, much better defined out. So, um, Peach has been a very boring character, even in the original release. Not much going on there with her. Uh, they improved on it a little bit here and gave her a little bit more of depth, a little bit better look to it, and a little more articulation in the, the body overall, and uh, just the, the general look. So again, this one's coming in at eight points of articulation, and this one came in at six points of articulation, so still winning out in articulation. Uh, one thing they changed here is like Peach had legs on the original release. You could see them. Uh, she was wearing little shorts underneath there. This one is all filled in solid. Uh, so, and, but she has shoes still and you could see a little uh, skin. So these are still um, high heel shoes she's wearing. Uh, but this one's a little more stable than this one. So I guess when they filled that in, they gave a little bit more stability to the character than this one it used to wobble around a little bit. But uh, that's, I don't want to bullet it too much because Peach was kind of a boring character anyway uh, in terms of her design. And um, uh, they didn't really go with the Super Princess Peach look like from that one game where she was the, um, and, uh, the protagonist in that story. So uh, this is still a massive improvement. If you're a Peach fan, then you're definitely going to want this version of Peach. It's much better. Um, way better. Uh, I, I can't say it, it looks pretty close to how she's appearing in the movie. She also has alternate designs, so we'll see if they do other versions of the figure. Um, they have not done very many of her to date. Uh, so here she, here's Peach. She looks great. Uh, much better improvement over the price, or, or I'm sorry, over the original design. No, I don't know about the price point for me, just because it's a very basic character, but it's still drastically improved over this one. Um, in, in terms of everything they're offering here, the box, the articulation, the character design. So a lot more tooling and a lot more engineering went into this one than the original. So up to you if you're a Peach fan, yes, definitely. Um, if you're a Mario fan or a casual Mario fan, I don't, it just, you know, if you need it for completion's sake, then of course. But, um, you know, for me, it's, I, I, I would always just focus on the core character, but still a great character, still way better than the original. So saving the best for last, let's take a look at Bowser. So I wasn't kidding when I said save the best for last because this Bowser figure is amazing. Let me give you a close up 360 so you can really appreciate the detail on this guy. Um, you can see they did a great job giving him this really defined look, uh, everything down to his, his hair, his, his horns, the spikes on his, his collars, the uh, depth of his scales here, uh, his mouth, his, everything is just amazing. Um, they even gave you additional articulation in the tail. Uh, the shell looks great. There is some uh, design, uh, some yeah, some designs on the on the shell here. So, I just really great job with designing Bowser. Uh, really happy with how this guy turned out. Um, you could see even bigger than the original Bowser, which the original Bowser was more in a, in a six inch scale compared to the the smaller four inch um, Mario uh, characters. So he's definitely standing out above those. And this one stands out above this guy. So he's wider, he's taller. So probably coming in at eight, eight to nine inches, uh, this Bowser. So uh, much better Bowser. Although this was one of my favorite characters from the line. Uh, they did a lot of good work with him as well. He had articulation in the legs and the tail and the arm. Uh, so this was still a very well articulated Bowser. 
Um, he had a little cutout for his hair here in the shell. Uh, so I don't have the box for him to compare it, but he came in a box, not a pad. The box, it looked like this. Um, so very similar kind of design to this box, essentially. So with this Bowser, like I said, you're getting a lot more. Uh, it looks a lot better, more ferocious, more defined, just like we saw in the other characters. Um, but that's not all. He comes with some more features as well. Um, he, so his shell here comes off. So you get into it because this one requires batteries. Uh, so compartments right here and there's a switch. Uh, we have them on here, um, essentially. And the shell comes back on. This was pretty easy to get on and off. So nothing to fuss with there. His, uh, when you take this out here, what you get is easier access to the head. And this piece here removes on his hair. And you add some water in for this smoke effect we'll show you in a second. Uh, Jax was great because they give you a little bottle to put water drops into there. They say around 8 to 10. Uh, so a lot of uh, figures don't include something like this. So this was great. It's in the bottom of the box. It's easy to miss. It's in the clear packaging. Uh, so essentially we're going to, we put that in there and then we close him up and um, he should be breathing uh, fire essentially. So you push his little spike here on the shell and you see this little uh, mouth look where his, his mouth lights up. Um, we'll see if we can get him to, to breathe smoke. So a little cut there because it took us a minute to figure it out, but you need to add a little bit more water the first time around. Now, when you're putting water into toys like this, I always recommend a distilled water uh, because if you have hard water or any kind of hardish water, you're gonna end up building up like little calcium deposits and whatnot to ruin the figure and you won't be able to use them anymore because it'll just clog it. Uh, we have um, soft water here, water softening system. So that has never had an issue with anything, but if you don't have something like that, uh, definitely use distilled water. Uh, so basically when you push the button here, he has this little smoke effect and the red light kind of uh, accents that smoke and makes it look like he's breathing fire. So this is a really cool uh, feature to add into a figure like this. I think it just enhances the, the, the play element and the display element and the, the overall coolness factor of a toy like this. So huge improvement over the basic Bowser. Um, again, he's coming in at 30 bucks. I think this was around $25 or $30. Uh, I can't recall at the time. I want to say probably $20, $25. So not much more money, a lot more going on with it. Um, he's coming up with 14 points of articulation. I, I don't think this one had 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, maybe eight, nine, maybe nine points, uh, maybe 10, if you count the, the way the wrists move here. Oh, they don't turn. So nine points, so 14, so more articulation, uh, way better design to him, uh, more depth to the character, better tooling, and then, of course, this fun factor with this blowing of the smoke. So 100% worth it, way worth it. I think you're actually getting a value on this one. They probably could have easily charged 40 for it, and I'd still think it'd be worth it. So value on this character, definitely worth getting. Um, if you're a Bowser fan or a Mario fan, it's going to complete your set. Uh, and he's, he's definitely awesome. Uh, again, that, the coolness factor of this blowing the, the smoke. So totally worth it. Uh, let's take a look at all these characters together now. So here's the first wave of the Mario movie figures from Jack Pacific. Uh, again, I was a little, you know, kind of concerned going into it being that these were twice as much money and they didn't look that, uh, different essentially from the outside of what the $9 figures were offering or the $10 figures were offering. But they 100% are different and they are definitely worth the money. I mean, a lot taller, more articulation, better tooling, uh, a lot more coolness factor to them, radically redesigned characters like Toad, um, way improved characters uh, like Peach and Mario and Luigi here. And then, uh, you know, just alteringly different characters like Bowser with this really cool feature that he has in him. Uh, definitely worth the price uh, if you're a Mario fan um, or you know, getting really excited about the movie. They, they're definitely scratch that itch as well. But this this line is great. Uh, I hope they continue to do more and bring other characters we've seen in the film, like uh, Kamek and maybe some other Koopa Troopas and uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, we haven't had a Donkey Kong um, character in a while. I don't think they ever they might have made Donkey Kong. I can't recall if they made Donkey Kong in the line. I know they made Diddy Kong. Uh, but it'd be great to get a new Donkey Kong in there. Hopefully we'll get a large version of Donkey Kong like Bowser here and uh, maybe alternate uh, costume for Peach. And uh, I know we saw Cat Mario and there's, uh, you know, maybe other character versions we'll see uh, as well. But this line is great. 
Uh, they did a really good job. Uh, they should be proud of themselves on how much of an improvement these are over the, the base uh, other characters they've done. And these are really mimicking the um, look of the movie. So that's great as well. So definitely worth it. If you see them, uh, they should be on shelves right now. We just grabbed these at Target. Uh, but definitely worth it if you're wondering like how much better are these than the uh, the four inch line considering they're twice the price they're much much better as you can see here uh, particularly this guy if I had to pick just one figure from the entire wave it would be this Bowser so much better they haven't offered the six inch Bowser in years anyway uh, so this this eight to ten or nine inch Bowser way better than that Bowser so even if you just need a Bowser for your set this is the Bowser to get. Uh, so that was our look at the Mario movie line from Jack Pacific out in stores now. Uh, the basic models are $20 each and the large Bowser is $30. So check them out at your local store online. They're pretty much sold anywhere right now. And uh, grab them if that's what you're looking for. Uh, they're definitely uh, fill that Mario void in your life. So that's all for this time. As always, like, subscribe, and follow. We have a whole bunch of new products we're going to be showing you in the next month or two. So keep checking back and we will see you guys next time.